coincidences. So I found this video on Fox over a year ago. So I had a supporter say, I think you misunderstanding Trump when he said they're trying to get rid of the cows. So I'm going to play this clip for y'all. But when I watch this clip, I still think Trump was trying to warn us about them trying to take out cows and a lot more stuff. So I do feel like I owe it to y'all so y'all can make up y'all own mind instead of just believing in what I believe in. And then I'm going to point out some coincidences. Let's roll the clip. And here's something about the Green New Deal. And it's not two billion or twenty billion, as you said. I'm it's one hundred trillion dollars. I'm talking about when they want to rip down buildings and rebuild the building. No, it's the that is not most ridiculous. Not where airplanes are out of business. That's where right. two car systems are out. Where not they want true. to take out the cows. Not, you know, that's true. not true either, right? Not this true. is a this is a one hundred trillion. That's more money than our country could make. Coincidence number one. Y'all remember the show Yellowstone, right? Where the helicopters came in and threw down poisonous hay so the cows can eat it and die. Ain't it crazy? This was in Yellowstone as well. In 1873, the American government killed 1.5 million buffalo just to starve the Native Americans, just so they can depend on the government. And here goes another coincidence. Trump said they want to take out the cows. He told us a food shortage was coming. And did you know for the 10,000 cows that died? It's being reported in two weeks, four or five major trucking companies will be closing down in the California areas in two weeks. They just stopped the independent truckers being owner-operators. I mean, we had to know this was coming. You know what I mean? The big stores, they telling them now, don't deliver any other more food to the grocery stores. No food, I'm repeating this, no food in two weeks will be transported to the grocery stores in California. They is I got a hard on for California. They is making the example out of California. They, I, I guess that's because you got to, they, they got to start there. You got some of the biggest cities in the country, right? And then you got, yeah, and then you got all the ports right there. They, they starting with y'all, California. They start with y'all, they're going to work their way east. They start with California and Texas. They knocking off the two biggest boys, the big boys first. Slowly but surely. This one right here, if they do that in two weeks, how many of y'all out there really got enough food to last for about six or five or six months or even in the position right now to go buy that much food? I say, y'all, y'all in my prayers, if this happens, we we'll always hope and pray that it does not. You know what I mean? But it's being reported in two weeks' time, there will be no more food from the trucking companies, maybe even less than that, delivered to the grocery stores. It's time to pray, fight back, or y'all better do something. Lord, have mercy. It's getting real in California. Y'all think this is a joke or something? Look at that. Six months, that's all. so much more. I'm really getting the education today, and I really do appreciate it. This is a five alarm fire. This is crazy. And this is scary shit. Hey, TikTok. If you want a diesel engine of any kind, you're going to want to listen to what I have to say. 1540 engine oil, or actually any of the diesel engine oils, are soon to become unavailable. 
probably already noticed that there seems to be some kind of a shortage out there on engine oils. It's hard to find. Rotella, for example, in Delvac are almost non-existent. Well, the reason is is because they're literally non-existent. Rotella has announced they're not even producing oil right now. The reason is is because they have to have a certain additive package for it to be diesel engine oil. And the two producers of that additive are Chevron and the Libazol. Both of those companies, that's it. They're the only ones that produce the additive packages worldwide. Two companies. So it doesn't matter what kind of oil that you buy, you're getting an additive package from one of those two companies. The problem is, is that both of those companies are out of those additive packages. They don't have any. And they're predicting that it's going to be an entire year before they're able to come back online and start producing additive packages so all these other companies can produce their oil again. I want it to sink in what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you there is going to be no diesel engine oil for an entire year available at all. Period. So unless your truck can run for an entire year on a change of oil, you need to get some oil. Whatever it takes. If you want to continue to operate, you need at least a year's worth of oil sitting in the garage or in the shop. If you're a farmer, get some oil. You need to buy quite a few barrels. I'm All right, I want to start off by saying Brakatha Yahawa, Brakatha Yahawa Shai, Brakatha Yahawa, Brakatha Yahawa Shai, Kahalau Yahawa Ba Shimia Rashai, Kahalau Yahawa Ba Shimia Rashai, Ba Shimia Kakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone that told me this doctrine and truth and sincerity. Shalom unto elect. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh, which means he is or he exists. Bashim in the name of his only begotten son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We know his name to be Yaharashai, which means he is the deliverer. He is the savior for the Hebrew Israelites from the pedigree of your father. Bashim in the name of the Rokah Kodash, which means the Holy Spirit that's able to give us the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of who we are, which are the true Hebrew Israelites. If you're so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native American, or of the speckled bird looking like the other nations in your spirit, bear witness with this doctrine, you could be one elect. Shalom, we've been discontinued from our heritage because we went off following after false gods and false idols, not following the law, such commandments that was given to us by our forefathers. And because of those offenses, we were sent into captivity. But through your Shai HaMashiach, being that perfect lamb, being that perfect sacrifice, we're able to be able to come back to this uh, knowledge, wisdom, understanding of who we are, to be able to shine that light on us when we were in gross darkness, when we were in confusion, we didn't know who we were, okay? So all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahashai, okay? To be able to what see who our oppressor is, which is Esau Edom. Esau means wasted away he is, and they are the biblical Edomites that it speaks about in the scriptures that in the latter days would have the fatness of the earth and control with a great sword. These are the so-called white men of this world, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Oppenheimers, the DuPonts, they're the ones that are behind this, uh, you know, this famine, being, this weaponizing of food, okay, they're the ones behind all the, the barium aluminum in the air, they're the ones behind the crashing of the economy, they are the wicked that it speaks about in the scriptures, okay, and they're at their end, they know that they have but a short time, so they're coming down with great rain, okay, so the, but the servants of Yahweh Shem Shai on the right hand side, because this story is about what good and evil. The protagonist, which is Jacob, okay? And the antagonist, which is uh, Esau Edom, okay? And what you're seeing is that on display. And with the men of the Lord, we're supposed to give what our people warning, whether they will hear or they will forbear. Because again, the infrastructure is already set up for these devils to come in like a madman sparing none. And what do they want? They want your soul. They want your VMAT2 gene. They want your God gene. They want that... Uh, that a karagma, which is a graven image in your forehead inside of your body so they can be able to control you as a perpetual slave, okay? And that's the time that we're at. As you're seeing, okay, the, there's a, um, you had 70,000 truckers that were laid off, okay? And what sparked this, you know, this lesson was I was watching another lesson by the by the brother Yahweh uh, Maccabees, and there was a lady, she was a security guard, I think up in Sacramento, and basically she she works at a trucking place. So she had three truckers that went in, went in and they were upset. Why? Because they, they weren't able to, um, they're not able to work no more because again, there's no supplies, okay? Uh, Esau Edom has weaponized the food. He has destroyed over a hundred uh, food supply places. 
and has destroyed what the, the food supplies. Okay, so there's no more food. Okay, uh, about um, about six weeks ago, they said there was about what um, there was six more weeks of food. Now we're about at the last two three weeks. Okay, then you're seeing what the oil. Okay, the oil they don't have no more oil. They said they only have what eight more weeks of, of oil, as the guy was saying. Okay, and that goes for the diesel trucks. If you don't have trucks, you don't have food going to food and medicine going to these actual stores, which is going to create an all out what um, all out chaos. Okay, then you saw over there in um, what is that the UK, which they're all part of it. That's the mother of uh, Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great means um, uh, Babylon means con confusion, and America means bitter. And we're in a bitter, confused state when you have these devils waging war on the people. OK, and they're coming. They're coming in uh, there as far as they're they're speaking to you with that. What slick talk. OK, they're acting like they're, they're not doing anything. Meanwhile, they're pulling strings. OK, but they're nothing but the people that you see, like the president, things like that. Those are nothing but what the cult of personalities that you see. But the people behind this behind the um, scenes, which are the Rothschilds. OK, the Rockefellers, the Oppenheimers, the DuPonts. These are the wicked in, in the scriptures that would what um, be controlling the earth. OK, and what are they doing? That's that red horse taking peace from the earth. Right. And this is the time that we're at. So this lesson is going to be centered around, you know, the famine and about the chaos is about to happen. And this is the beginning stages of what Jacob's trouble. OK, and people think it's a joke. Right. They put it right in your face. They had Trump tell you that they want to what they want to have, uh, you know, have you have, uh, you know, one one car, you know, um, if not, they want to take away your cars. What do you think that gas price is about? What do you think about uh, Joe Biden, why he's sending the crude oil over to these other countries? Because, again, with with no cars equals what they can be able to have full control where they can be able to get you in your house, bring you to call you a health risk and bring you to these internment camps and legally execute you. Because, again, they have a thing called what the Georgia Guidestones, which is the what uh, there's eight point eight billion people in the world and they want to bring it down to five hundred million. And how do they uh, break down all the people and kill all the people? By pestilence, evils, by uh, barium lumen in the air, fluoride in the water, uh, GMO foods. Okay, this is the wicked. If the if the righteous in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. The people are mourning. Why? They don't have no jobs. Okay, they don't have no jobs. They don't have no security. And that staff of bread is being broken down. Okay, and it's about to get ugly. Okay, we're in the beginning stages of it. A lot of news just came out today about, um, you know, what they're doing. OK, and then you, as you see, the economy's breaking uh, the Federal Reserve as far as in Babylon, the great. They're not printing out no more money. So which means no more stimulus. So all these guys that lost their jobs as far as these truck drivers, which these these truck drivers would be considered middle class. They're supporting a lot of families. So that means there's going to be no more money there. You're not getting um, you're not getting unemployment. OK, you're not going to get SSI anymore. They're going to cut off all that. They're breaking the staff down. So if you don't have your Haba Shemir Shai on your side, you're not going to have that edge and you're going to get caught up. And the bloodshed, the strife, the calamities and the tribulation that's about to start off. So this is Revelation 101, the revelation and revelation means what to be manifest, which is manifest what towards the end. OK, that's going through what the prophecy it says. And this was um, this is uh, John the Revelator when he was on the island of Patmos, when he was uh, put in prison because of what him preaching the word. And he and um, the angel came to him and was speaking to him and giving him the vision to make it plain upon tables, writing out uh, to give us warning for these times that are that are right now. Revelation one and one, the revelation of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, which Yahweh gave unto him to show unto the servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by the angel unto his servant, John. OK, and John was what a prophet. OK, John the Baptist. OK, and also you had John the Revelator. OK, and John also means uh, what grace. OK, it says two who bear a record of the word of Yahweh and the testimony of Yahweh Hamashiach. It says in all things, it says of all these all these things that he saw. OK, so all the things that he saw on the island of what, Patmos, he was able to see the vision and be able to see it today. And what did he do? He wrote it on the, wrote it to make it plain upon tables so we could be able to have the understanding today. And the Lord has what opened up our eyes. OK, open far as the elect open up our eyes to be able to see. OK, see what? See the vision and see the destruction that's about to happen to the place and seek the Lord while he is near. It says blessed is he. So blessed is he that readeth. OK, readeth. And that they that hear the words of prophecy. So you're able to what hear as well as see. OK, the Lord has given you vision and given you light. If you're able to what see the famine, 
You're able to see who the wicked is and you're able to know who you are. But also what faith without works is not dead. You have to put in that work. OK, and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Yes. Yeah, so the time is at hand. OK, because, again, a uh, day to the Lord, uh, a thousand years to us is one day to the Lord. So it's only been a couple days. OK, and that's why it says the time is at hand. Yeah, we're in the latter times. We're at the last seconds. OK. Let's get this to stay in the same chapter. <clears throat> Revelation 12 and 12. It says, uh, Revelation 12 and 12, Therefore rejoice ye heavens that dwell therein. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. So the sea is, is, is uh, um, symbolizing of, of the people, right? And woe, which means what? Destruction. For the devil, which is the adversary to righteousness, is come down unto you having great wrath. So great wrath is when you don't have food. Great wrath is when you don't have a job. Great wrath is when people uh, come into your house and, and take your goods. Okay, great wrath is when these, these women start getting ravished. Okay, they don't have no safety. Great wrath is when the police force uh, are, are um, you know, leaving the police force and they don't want to work anymore because of draconian measures that Esau Edom has put on them. Having great wrath because he knoweth that he had it but a short time. So he knows that he has but a short time. Why? Because he's seen the men of the Lord on the highways and the byways pushing this word, also sitting, uh, being fervent in the spirit and also what on the towers, which is on the, what the internet pushing forth this word, exposing him, exposing him for the devil that he is exposing, making what Esau eat him bare. Okay. That's all. He, and also he's seen the chariots. Okay. And he's being exposed for the devil that he is. Second Thessalonians two and three, let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall come except there come a fall away at first and the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. And that's Esau, Edom, the white man. OK, and perdition means what destruction and this devil is bringing what destruction he's crashed the economy. OK, he's uh, this place is all wormwood. All the roads are broken down. Bridges are broken down. People are broken down from from the hot sauce. OK, they're walking around They're They're not in that merge spirit. They're just, still, still trying to party, but they don't but they're not happy. Why? Because they're not, they don't have no money. They're looking at the gas prices, okay, and, and they're struggling, right? They're looking at the food prices. They're looking at their kids, right? And, and they're tired of their kids. Why? Because their kids are out of order too. It says for it, who, and then who put that, who put that um, vibration? That's Esau Edom because he's the one that's in power. Second Thessalonians 2 and 4, who oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God, that is worship, so that he is God, sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So he believes that he is God and he can believe, he believes that through his uh, CERN collider, hydrogen collider, that he can be able to go back to the beginning and be able to start it over and change um, what the Lord has already presented, which is going to be Esau Edom, and fetters, irons, and chains. His, play, his kingdom's going to be destroyed. Yahweh Shai is going to be the king of kings, lord of hosts. Okay, and um, and the elect is going to be joint heirs. Okay, and now he's at his end, right? And he, what is he trying to do? He's trying to implement his karagma, which is his technology to be able to be inside of you. It's something that's physical. Okay, something that's physical. It's not an embargo. It's not a white woman. It's not Christianity. It's not being a cop. Okay, it's something that's physical. They have the infrastructure where they knocked out the paper dollar. They're bringing in the central banking digital currency, okay, a cashless society, and that's one of their agendas, a cashless society, so they can be able to, um, if, they, if they don't like what you, if you don't comply to their mandates, they can be able to just shut you off, and you won't have nothing, and you'll be on the outside, okay? No one can be able to help you because, again, there's no more, it's only about um, a cashless society. There's, no gonna, there's not going to be no more under the table, okay? Eight. Then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord Yahweh Shai shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Okay. And that the consuming of his mouth, that's the prophets being able to, uh, you know, um, give the vision, give the vision, give the destruction and make it plain upon tables for the elect and bid them to the marriage um, before the destruction comes. Okay. Gathering up with the tabernacle of David. Okay. And this brightness of his coming is consuming this devil. 
okay, consuming this devil because he's what? That dreadful sound in his ear. And he's being what made bare. It says, nine, even him who's coming is after the working of shaitan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. So again, when you go into that word lying, it goes into their pseudoscience, okay? And that's their pseudoscience that they want to, they think they have cures to be able to help you when it's nothing but death, okay? Anything, any kind of, uh, uh, um, you know, so-called thing that you get from the doctor, guess what it's going to be? Nothing good, okay? Because again, it's coming from the shaitan. And it's when you go into the word lying, it goes into the word pseudos, and then it also goes into the definition. It says, in a broad sense, not what it seems to be, okay? So, and it also speaks about in uh, Sirach 12 and 10, never trust thine enemy, for like iron is rusted, so is his wickedness, okay? And he's never, he's never going to, that means he's never going to change uh, his spots. Going back to what, the Tuskegee experiments that he did on our people, okay? Over there in uh, 19, was it 1930 to like 1970, Okay? And how was he able to do that? He would have the women come in, and and have the bring in the men. Okay, going back to uh, going back to Adam and Eve. Okay, and then falling for what the serpent has. Okay, Jeremiah forty nine and ten. But I have made Esau bear. Who's Esau? Esau is Edom. When you go into the word Edom, it goes into the Greek word Idumi, which goes back to red. Okay, when you go into the, uh, Genesis four, I think it's about fourteen. And it goes into the word Mark, okay? Mark goes into what the leprosy that, uh, that Esau Edom has, okay? Which is um, be translucent, okay? That's making him what uh, actually a, a red man, okay? And that's then when you go into the uh, Strong's definition, it goes into what evidence? Evidence of who this devil is because he's a vagabond fugitive. A vagabond means going to and fro, okay? Fugitive means that he's a fugitive from justice, okay? He's hiding behind these different... Uh, um, you know, German, he's hiding behind American, he's hiding behind, you know, a uh, uh, small hat, he's hiding behind these, all these uh, aliases, when he's actually the, the biblical Edomites, okay, the wicked that it speaks about in the scriptures, that has prominently shall be judged in the scriptures, as it speaks about in Isaiah 34 and 5, and Isaiah 63, okay, they're important in the movie, because they're going to be destroyed, and put in fetters, irons, and chains, and they're the only uh, nation that's going to be exterminated. They're the only person, only uh, nation that's not going to be uh, promised anything, okay? So going into it, yeah, so um, made Esau bear uncovered his secret place. Yeah, so uncovered his secret places, uncovered what uh, the, the um, what he's trying to do, which is to bring in his new world order and have everyone karagman up, okay? His secret place is also going into what his uh, slavery, all the slavery, the rape, robber, and murdering that he's done, he's being exposed for that. He's being exposed for being a pedophile, okay? He's being exposed for, um, you know, just being a, a vile person, a churl, okay? And that's what you're seeing on the on display is a, is a very vile person because what type of person would uh, wage war on his own people, would, would destroy his own kingdom, okay? Let me just get that because I brought it up. This is a 35, 32. <clears throat> Isaiah 32 and 5, the vile person shall no more be called liberal, nor the churl said to be bountiful. So when you go into that word churl, it goes into niggerly, which goes into uh, to be a scoundrel, which goes into be uh, greedy. OK, because even though he has money, he has all the resources, he has the fatness of the earth. What does he want? He still wants more. He wants people's soul. OK, and he loves blood. And so blood shall pursue him. Okay, Ezekiel 35, 6, for the vile person will speak vilely in his heart. Yeah, so his heart goes back to the Hebrew word lahab. Okay, so in his mind, he will work iniquity, sin upon sin, to practice hypocrisy and to utter error against Yahweh, to make empty the soul of the hungry, and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. Yeah, so that's what he's done to our people by giving them what? Christianity, Roman Catholicism, okay, Pan-Africanism. All these uh, false gods that can't do nothing for you in the day of judgment. If you don't have the Lord, if you're not of the elect, you're going to be destroyed. You're going to get caught up in the said famine and pestilence that's about to happen. OK, it says seven. The instruments also of the churl are evil. He devises wicked devices to destroy the people with lying words, even when the needy speak right. Yeah. So even when the prophets are speaking right, what does he try to do? Misinformation, disinformation. Those guys are um, thugs or those guys are against what we're pushing, what are they pushing? Uh, man on man, woman on woman, transformers. What are they doing? They're destroying the economy. Okay, they're breaking down the food supply. They're making people go down for them, the Egyptian for help. And when they when they get help, what happens? They they end up doing the Harlem Shake or the Justin Bieber. Okay, and that's all through that hot sauce. And so with this this food supply breaking down, okay, there's gonna be no more food. There's not gonna be any. There's, let me actually go to Isaiah thirty. 
three and one. <clears throat> this is Isaiah three and one. For behold, the Lord Yahweh Shai, thy power Yahweh of armies. Okay, that word host means armies. It says, do take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff and the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. So right now, what's holding up the economy? The so-called paper dollar, that's no more. Okay, that they're not printing out no more. You know, uh, people are, are, are the last end. People are ended up killing their own families. Why? Because that once that staff is broken, which is the uh, the welfare system, you know, the, the Section 8, okay, the, um, the, the unemployment, OK, um, you know, these different types of, of government, uh, these stimulus checks, once these are over, guess what? That's the that's that's the everything's going to go to utter chaos because no one's going to be able to be in that merge spirit. You're not going to be able to go down to get the things that you wanted. OK, and guess what? Then that's going to be create what uh, these wars and civil wars, these class wars. Right. And people are going to start to what um, acts wax colder and colder. It says, uh. Let me read this in the NLT. It says, Yahabba Shemar Shai of heavens of armies will take away from Jerusalem and Judah everything they depend on, every bit of bread and every drop of water. So also you're seeing with these people that were, um, you know, during the thing that happened a couple of years ago, they were living uh, rent free. And now they're being what? Thrown on the street. OK, they're being thrown on the street. And and in Tennessee, what are they saying? They're saying that if you are homeless, then you're going to be arrested. OK, and where are they going to put you in these internment camps? And if you don't comply to their mandates to be a slave, guess what? They're going to off you off. That's that's why they have what these uh, smart guillotines that can legally execute you. That's why they have what these uh, these body bags. OK, that's why they have these coffins. OK, that's why uh, FEMA and the DHS ordered all these bullets. Be and why do they want to? Why do you keep seeing these mass shootings? These mass shootings are all about them. They want to take away the right to bear arms. Now, we uh, the men of the Lord. Our weapons of warfare are not cardinal, okay? We're not supposed to be uh, in a cardinal sense because the Lord is going to recompense our enemies, okay? We're supposed to fret not and, and wait on the Lord and trust in Him and trust in His ways, okay? Because to be a cardinal is is is, is an enemy to the, the Most High. That means you're an enemy to, to the Heavenly Father, okay? Let me get a couple more scriptures and we'll go back. So Ezekiel 4 and 17, because those arrows... It says Ezekiel 4 and 17. It says that they may want bread and water. Wait, let me start. Yeah, Ezekiel 4 and 16. Moreover, it said unto me, son of man, behold, I will break thy staff of bread. Okay, so whatever that you have, whether it was your job or whatever, that's going to be gone. Okay, because there's no economy. There's no more. If you don't have an economy, okay, you don't have no money. Okay, simple as that. In the economy, they don't have, they, they, they're printing out fake money. OK. Right. They're about what, 30 percent, 30 percent um far as, uh you know, b below the actual uh, level far as inflation. OK, they say it's like eight, but they're actually about 30 percent. Ezekiel 4 and 16, moreover, said in son of man, behold, I will break thy staff of bread in Jerusalem and they shall eat bread by weight with care and they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment. Yeah. So, again, going back to you're not going to have that much. OK. And then you're going to have to weigh it out far as if you have family or, or whatever, and it's going to get ugly. 17, it says that they may want bread and water and be astonished with one another and consume away with iniquity. Yeah, lacking food and water, people will look at one another in terror and they will waste away under their punishment. Yeah, so again, you're going to see a lot of people what pining away. You're going to see people uh, eating, uh, eating people. If you're of the elect, okay, you're going to see uh, cannibalism. You're going to see... Um, you know, people eating their children. You're going to see people eating their neighbors. Why? Because of the lack of bread. They done broke the staff. The Lord, the Lord is bring forth with his judgment. Let's get another one in here. This is, uh, let's see. Yeah, right here. Ezekiel 5 and 16. It says, when I shall send famine upon the... Read this in the NLT. It says, I will shower you with the deadly arrows of famine to destroy you. The famine will become more and more severe until every crumb of food is gone. Yeah, so the longer that you live, if you're not a servant of Yahabah Shemir Ashai, okay, the longer that you live, every every crumb and every every drip drop, people are going to be eating out of trash cans. Okay, people are going to be eating eating people again, like I just said. OK, it's going to be ugly. Meanwhile, people are just in a, in a docile state, you know, 
they're in a docile state. They're just every thinking everything's going to be okay. They, you know, still partying, still being in the merch spirit, still getting that bag, you know, still uh, twerking in Walmart. Okay. When, when, uh, uh, is sending forth this judgment. We're starting, uh, the C second Ezra six, <clears throat> we'll start from 18. Actually, let's see. Yeah, we'll start right there. Yeah, Second Ezra 6 and 18. And they said, Behold, the day shall come that I will begin to draw nigh and to visit them that dwell upon the earth. How is the Lord visiting? By the plagues. Okay, the said plagues that are happening, the famine, the pestilence, the evils. Okay, and that's that's why he sent the prophets to what? To be able to give warning. But people, what? Mocked and scoffed. Let me get two scriptures. This is Jeremiah 28 and 8. The prophets that have been before me before the old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and evil and a pestilence. Because the prophets are also known as seers. So they're here to give you what the vision and give you warning. They're also known as the watchmen. Okay, to be able to give you that warning about uh, the, 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 um, the evils that are about to happen and seek the Lord while he is nigh. Okay, let me get another one. This is Second Chronicles. Because that's actually mercy by what? Sending forth the prophets. But people mock and they scoff and they don't believe in the Lord. They say it's written by a white man or it's written by a man. And um, they don't understand the evils that are about to happen. And all those words are going to be counted idle on the day of judgment. Second Chronicles 16 and what? 15. It says Second Chronicles yeah, 36 and 15. It says in Yahabah Shemashai, a father is sent to them by messengers. Who are the messengers? The messengers are the prophets. Okay. Messenger just means as an angel. Okay. You have celestial angels. Okay. Which are, which are our brothers and you uh, right in the spirit world. And you have what celestial angels, which are in, in the flesh. Okay. And they're here to give you, they have the same testimony of our Lord Yahabah Shai. Okay, to prophesy the downfall of this evil, wicked kingdom, bringing in the kingdom of Yaharashai, and the elect's going to be joint heirs, and there's going to be peace on the earth, and Esau Edom's going to be in subjection. Okay? It says, and sending because he had compassion. Yeah, let me read it again. And it says, Yahabashim Ashai, and the father sent to them by messengers rising up, rising up at times, and sending because he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. Who are his people? Okay, Deuteronomy 7 and 6, Deuteronomy 4 and 6, okay, which is Israel. He will what, have mercy on Israel and yet choose Judah. Okay, those are the tribes that are that are coming back together that you see that are standing on that great army that are coming back in the tabernacle of David. Well, meanwhile, two thirds of our people are in what, that mercy spirit. They got to get sacrificed over here because they won't hearken to the Lord. Second, when we're praying that we're of the elect, okay? Second Chronicles 36 and 16, but they mocked the messengers of Yahweh and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of Yahweh arose against his people till there was no remedy. That's right. So there was no remedy, okay? And that's what you're about to see. There's going to be no help, okay? You're not going to be able to call the police. The police force is going to be done, okay? There's going to be nothing but super soldiers out here, uh, uh, robot dogs and, and drones and uh, zombies walking around, okay? Let's get this word mocked. Yeah, to joke, to test. They make jokes. They say, oh, we got, uh, you know, you got dresses on. You know, why are you carrying around that Bible? Why do you got a beard? Okay, those things. They mocked and they scoffed. Okay, the Lord, the, the our, your Lord's really white. Okay, which is all, all abominations, which every idle word is going to be counted in the day of judgment. Yeah, they despise because what? Ultimately, they despise the um, Yaharashai. They despise this word, and because they despise this word, they shall be destroyed. Okay, and that's uh, Proverbs uh, 13 and 13. Okay, I want to get this word wrath because we're about to see a lot of wrath. This is uh, Hebrews 25, 34. Heat, rage, hot displeasure, indignation, which is indignation, righteous anger. Okay, wrath, poison bottles. Yeah, so there's going to be a lot of poison out here. Okay, uh, heat, fever, venom. <laughs> venom so you got that hot sauce out there and they're about to have that Morberg's uh, juice come out okay which is all the people that took the hot sauce okay the burning anger a rage so again there's going to be uh, Jake's going to be a terror to Egypt okay you're also going to have uh, uh, these people what shooting each other down just for the what the one of uh, the simple things okay all right so let's go back 
there's going to be what a great perplexity luke <clears throat> luke 21 and 25 it says and there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and upon the earth the stress of the nations with perplexity in the sea of the waves roaring so again that goes into uh you had you had the brothers um or there was a video where it was a whole red sky OK, then you had another video. I think it was in South Dakota. It was an all green sky. Then what people were starting to see these uh, aberrations as far as these ghosts because they, they let off the CERN project. OK, then you see what the the uh, the um, the planets aligning. OK, you're seeing the, what the uh, freight is drying up. OK, you're seeing earthquakes in diverse places. OK, you're seeing what the red moon. OK. And you're seeing, of course, the chariots in the the heavenly father, the chariots with the world enemy calls UFOs. OK, but they're actually the chariots of the, of the heavenly father and they're visiting this place. OK, and they're visiting the men of the Lord. So I want to get this word perplexity. <clears throat> Greek 640. Actually, let's go into the root word. This is the Greek, 639. Strong's G, 639. Apareo. 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 Okay, so it says to be without resources, to be in straits, to be left wanting, to be embarrassed, to be in doubt, not to know which way to turn. So, yeah, so your resources would be what? Your job. You got your job, your car, your woman. Those are you're going to, you mightn't be without those. Okay, even your children. Okay, straights goes back to a position of difficulty. You're not going to be able to go down to a, a local grocery store, your local uh, bodega. You're not going to be able to go to those places. Why? Because they're not going to have no food. As I was telling you earlier in the story, the um, they delivered to what the lady was saying. They delivered to, uh, you know, 7-Eleven, Chevrons, you know, these gas stations. And also the one guy, he was delivering to just grocery stores. And they said there's no more food supplies. OK, that's going to be and you're going to be embarrassed because you didn't come back to the Lord because you mock, mock the, the men of the Lord. You mock the messengers. Right. It says to be at loss with oneself, to be in doubt. You're going to be in doubt. You're going to be looking around and someone's going to knock you upside your head. OK, those spirits created for vengeance is going to be what great miseries not to know how to decide or what to do yet yeah, to be perplexed. OK, and that's the point we're at, because why people have lived in that merged spirit. They didn't want to come back to the Lord. OK, they didn't want to come back to the Lord. They want to be they want to uh, go to the white party with Jay-Z and Puff Daddy. They want to go in the special room. OK, they want to be they want to go to the concert with Travis Scott and, uh, you know, and get caught up in the in, in, in the trances. OK, they want to get uh, stomped out at these parties. OK, they want to get shot, shot up at the club. OK, they didn't want to do the hard work, which is coming back to the Lord and repenting and seeking why he's not and putting in this work and praying the Lord that he has mercy on you and pray that you have some balance. OK, for us to be able to endure to the end. OK, because, again, this no one's promised anything. It's just to put it, you know. Praying the Lord has mercy on us in the day, be accounted worthy in the day of judgment. Let's just get that. Luke 21, it says 36. It says, watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man. OK, that's that's all we're praying that the Lord is. Let me read this in the NLT. It says, keep alert at all times and pray that you might be strong enough to escape the coming horrors and stand before the son of man, the coming horrors. OK, let's just get let me get some of the horrors that are going to be happening. OK, and this is all headed into Jacob's trouble. We're in Jacob's trouble, but this is the beginning stages. It's going to increase. OK, and it's not getting better. It's not going to go back to so-called normal. OK, never was normal. It's not normal to have to work every day and, and, and be poisoned every day. That's not normal. OK. Our people who have Stockholm syndrome, right? Sirach uh, 40 and 9. B uh, death and bloodshed, strife and sword, calamities and famine, tribulation and scourge. So that's what's headed for what? It says these things are created for the wicked and for their sakes came the flood. That's what you're about to see. You're about to see that flood with Esau, Edom coming like a madman spirit nun, wanting those, uh, wanting those bodies, wanting those organs. Okay, I think uh, there was another video I saw. There was 7,000, they found 7,000 men inside of a, a cargo, a cargo, a big ass, you know, one of those cargo ships that be on the boats. Okay. They found 7,000 men in there and they, and they were, um, their, their rods were cut off. Okay. Organ harvesting. 
because that's what they're going to be doing. That's why they have the smart guillotine, okay? Because they're going to be using body parts. They also are what? The true vampires, okay? So this thing is going to be ugly. So those that don't believe, okay, <laughs> you don't have to believe because guess what? That's, you're not going to stop the prophecies, Roman 3 and 3, okay? Just real quick, 8 and 50, 2nd Ezra 8 and 50 for many great miseries shall be done unto them in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. And that's the reason why the Lord has to visit this place, because all the pride has been fulfilled. OK, there's not going to be no pride. The Lord is only coming for what the meek and the lowly. He's not coming for no proud spirits. OK, great miseries. So those miseries, bloodshed, strife, calamities, OK, scourge, whipping, OK. The, because why? You didn't hearken to the Lord. You didn't want to come back to the Lord because the Lord is merciful if you seek him. But again, only the elect is going to be able to attain uh, the, this mer the mercy. Okay. A very small remnant, a very small what? Sanctuary. This is Sirach, uh, yeah, 28. Sirach 39 and 28. Oh, yeah, that's what, let me get this first, because that's why it's important to be occupied in prophecy, to be watching as well as praying that you be counted worthy in the was that Luke 21 that I just read. OK, it says, but he that giveth his mind to the law of the most high is occupied in the meditation of occupied, occupied till I come. OK, occupying what doing this work. OK, doing this work, meditation. So constantly you're thinking about it. Occupied what in Psalms and hums, Psalms and hums about what's about to pop off. OK, be watching as well as praying. Right. Uh, seek the wisdom. Yes. Yeah, so the wisdom of the ancient. OK, which is from Yahweh. Right. Because this story, Isaiah 46 and uh, 10, the story uh, was written from the beginning. OK, all these things that are happening right now was written in the beginning. The Lord already writ this story. OK, he is the potter and we are the vessels. We're praying that we're of the, the vessel to honor. OK. Right. Uh, the wisdom of the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. What is prophecy? The testimony of our Lord Yahweh Shai of Revelation 19 and 10. Okay. Prophesying the downfall of, of this evil, wicked queendom, bringing in the kingdom of righteousness, which is Yahweh Shai, the king of kings, Lord of hosts, uh, King David, and the, and, the, and the tabernacle of David. Okay. It says, uh, too, he will also keep the sayings of renowned men and the subtile parables. He will be there also. So he will be there also, what? Put in that word. Okay. Remount saying so uh, of what the men of old, okay, Isaiah, you know, you got Jeremiah, okay, uh, and then you got what what the the apostles, okay, and and what Daniel, what is that, twelve and thirteen, that you will come back to your lot, okay. Well, if you were a prophet before, you're a prophet now, okay. Uh, subject uh, prophets are subject to the prophets, roughly paraphrasing that. What are the parables? The things that are about to happen, okay. The parables are the dark sayings, the karagma, the graven image in your forehead and your hand that they're trying to put in you. Uh, who Esau Edom is, who we are, okay? Three, he will also seek out the secrets of grave sentences and be cognizant in the dark parables. Yeah, so I was just speaking about the dark parables, okay? Like the, for instance, in Luke 21, the fig tree, okay? The fig tree is a symbolizing, symbolization of when it when it's, uh, uh, you know, right to pick, okay? And right now the harvest is, is ripe, okay? And the Lord's going to come down and, and pick out this place. Right now is, <laughs> you know what I mean? We're at the... Uh, you know what I mean? It's getting ready, right? And those are in, in the dark parables also is the names, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, because that's in the ancient Hebrew. It says that we will come back speaking the language of Canaan, okay, which would be the Lashawan Kadash, okay, which is our true language, because English and Spanish and French, those are all our oppressors' languages, okay? So going back to it, that's his uh, second Ezra 6 <coughs> and 18. It says, and I said, behold, the day shall come that I will begin to draw nigh to visit them that dwell upon the earth. I will begin to make inquisition of them, uh, of them, what, what they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness and with the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled. Okay. And that's what you're seeing right now. The affliction, uh, because Esau Edom has afflicted what, um, his holy children. Okay. Uh, the apple of his eye, the Lord is going to start to what make an inquisition to these devils. Okay. Put this, put this, <laughs> I'm about to say something, put this devil on trial. Okay. Wisdom, uh, wisdom of Solomon one and nine. Okay. It says, uh, 20 when the world, 
uh, shall begin to vanish away, shall be finished, and they will show these tokens. Yes, yeah, so tokens goes into the signs. The book shall be opened before the firmament, and they shall see all together. So the Lord, uh, our Lord Yahweh Shai, opened up the seals, Revelation 5, okay? It says 21, and the children of the year old shall speak with voices. The woman with child shall bring forth untimely uh, children three or four months and they shall live and be raised up so that's speaking about um far as the premature babies okay and what that's a symbolism of is the technology that's going to be around you know uh, what is it daniel's 12 and 4 where it speaks about knowledge shall be increased so meanwhile the knowledge on the right hand side is being increased far as the 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 understanding of the scriptures far as the prophecies are being manifest are being made clear okay also you have what the on the left hand side far as the technology of the karagma and also of the the babies being born okay so this is the uh, ezra's you know speaking about the times okay the times that we would be in and that's the times we're in right now because you have premature babies you have babies that are a month old that are be able to live okay it says um 22 and suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown the full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty yep and that's what you're seeing the a uh, couple years ago you saw a lot of the middle class get knocked out okay then what did you see you saw the middle class get knocked out and then then you saw what um the now the middle class is out there on the on the <laughs> on the um skid row robbing and stealing okay robbing and stealing because they never not they they never had anything they bought all these things they bought all these uh, uh, items when they didn't have, and they put themselves in debt. Now they're homeless, okay? It says, because they trusted in the Egyptian. And it says, um, it says in the Trump, yeah, so, and then these storehouses being uh, closed, that's speaking about there's no more trucks in there. The trucks can't go to the stores, the stores close. So even if people try to rob and steal from them, there's nothing in those stores, Okay. And that's what you're the beginning stages you're seeing because they what they raise the diesel gas. They don't have no more oil for the trucks. OK, they're they're making these uh, they're making the truckers uh, have to go to the companies, which means they have to what take the uh, hot sauce. They don't want to take the hot sauce, which means they're not going to have no job. There's no unemployment. So these truckers are going to and the truckers are not the nicest people. OK, they're going to be out there getting violent. OK. Those are going to be a lot of your uh, uh, right to bear arms people, okay? So it's going to be ugly. It says the trumpet shall give a sound, which uh, when every man hear it, that shall be suddenly afraid. So again, right now, the men of the Lord are blowing the trumpet, giving a warning uh, to the battle. But what's happening? You're having people, they're not prepared for the battle. Let's just get this. <laughs> again, I'm just going in the spirit. You know, I saw this, um, I saw the brother's video. I watched like, maybe 10 minutes of it and then um you know i had some other videos that when the spirit jumped on me so you know strike when the iron's hot uh that's not it that's uh i think it's seven bear with me ezekiel seven and Actually, I'll, I'll, let me go for the top. It's Ezekiel 7 and 1. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Also, though, son of man, thus said Yahweh Shemar Sai unto the land of Israel, and end and end is come upon the four corners of the land. Okay, and real quick. Because the Lord is, is not prolonging it anymore. Let's get that. Ezekiel 12 and 28. Let me highlight this real quick. Ezekiel 12 and 28, therefore it said, thus said Yahabah Shemashai, thou shalt none of my words be prolonged anymore, but the word which I have spoken shall be done and said Yahabah Shemashai. So the word is the word that has been spoken by the prophets. Now, now it is actually manifesting, which is actually touching people. Okay. Because what? They mocked and they scoffed. Okay, Ezekiel 7 and 2. Also, son of man, thus said Yahabah Shemashai, land of Israel, and the end is come upon the four corners of the land. How do we know it's the end? Wars or rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, earthquakes, upwards of the people. These are all the signs of the end times. Okay. It says, um, now is the end come upon thee and I will send my anger upon thee and I will judge thee according to thy ways and I will recompense upon thee and thy abominations. So again, that goes into that black. Let me, let me get that. Let 
Revelation 6 and 5, and there went open the third seal. I heard the third beast say, come and see, and behold, a low, a black horse. And he sat on him and had a pair of balances in his hand. So the pair of balances is a symbolizing of what um, the, the, the righteous and the wicked, okay? If you're righteous, the Lord's going to put that hedge around you. If you're wicked, he's going to uh, hit you with the bloodshed, the strife, the calamity. And there's going to, 2 Ezra 5 and 1 tells us there's going to be a lot of death. That black horse is a symbolizing of uh, slavery because this devil has us under captivity. Okay, he has us under um, captivity and we're praying that the Lord to be able to set us free. Now we're free because of this word, but, but uh, ultimately free is in the kingdom. Okay, because there is no continuance sitting here and there's no rest here. What's that? Let me get, I forgot which one it is, no rest. <clears throat> Bear with me. Okay, slog in. Twadi Yabba Shimra Shai, Micah 2 and 10. Micah 2 and 10, arise and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with sore destruction. Yeah, this place will destroy you, it will suck you into its net, okay? Because again, there's nothing but abominations and, and vexations of spirit, okay? Because you can't win in this place. You know, you get a job, you're going to, you, at some point, the curses are going to hit you, okay? You have a woman, she going to hit you, or your kids, whatever that it is, or it might be your health, okay? That's why this devil has uh, polluted the whole earth. This is uh, Hebrews 13 and 14. Hebrews 13 and 14. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. And that's going to be the kingdom. We seek one to come. Okay. Because what? This place is what? Defiled. Isaiah 25 and 5. The earth is also defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, and broke the everlasting covenant. They have cursed the devout earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are born, burned, and few men left. Yes, yeah, so again, that's going into those missiles, right? It says, The new wine mourneth the, the vine languish, and all the merry hearted did sigh. Yeah, so they're crying and sighing because they, they can't, they can't, uh, they're not able to uh, party no more. It says, The mirth, the mirth of the tablet sees the noise of them rejoice. Ended the joy of the heart seed. Yeah, so no more twerking in uh, Walmart no more. Nine, they that drink wine with strong drink, they shall be bitter to them and drink it. Yeah, so uh, the the even the, the wine or the, the, the alcohol, the liquor is not going to be able to help you. It's not going to do nothing for you because it's going to be so uh, heavy. It says 10, the city of confusion. Okay, and confusion goes into the definition. That's the definition of Babylon. Babylon is confusion. Okay, the city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man can come in. Okay, yeah, so everyone is locked up because again, what there's there's uh people robbing and stealing. Okay, right. It says there is crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. Yeah, so all this uh, party spirit and I'm gonna go to this concert. I'm gonna go do this. I'm gonna go to the beach. I'm gonna do all this. Nah, it's gonna be all ended because again, there's gonna be like a madman spirit. None. You're not gonna be able to go nowhere. They already said there's gonna be lockdowns in Europe. On, I think July 15th, and that's gonna come here probably the, in the next month or two. Okay. So we'll go back to Ezekiel. <coughs> Ezekiel 7, and uh, we'll start at 3. It's now as the end come upon, I will send my anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways, and I will recompense upon them thine abominations. Yeah, so the detestable uh, sins, all the wicked abominations, the man on man, woman on woman, uh, transformers, okay? Uh, the, you know, worshiping, fornicating with, uh, you know, so-called Jesus Christ or, or, you know, these other different uh, false gods and false idols. Okay. For in mine, I shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense. Yes. I'll rape, I'll repay back thy ways upon thee and thy abomination shall be in the midst, in midst of thee. And you shall know that I am Yahweh. Thus said Yahweh and evil, only an evil behold is come. The end is come and the end come to watch of thee. Behold is come. The morning is coming to thee and thou dwell us in the land the time has come the day of trouble okay jacob's trouble right and ultimately the day of the lord okay is near and not the sounding again of the mountains yes yeah, so the mountains goes into the government 
okay? Yeah, the shouts, the shouts, <laughs> what does it say? The shouts and the, and the anguish, okay? Yeah, because again, there's not, it's not going to be that place that you thought it was anymore. Eight, now I will surely pour out my fury upon thee, accomplish my anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways. Going into that black horse, the judgment. Okay, ultimately going into the pale horse, which is Esau, Edom, bringing forth what? Death and hell. Okay, and hell is the condition played out on earth. According to thy ways, I will recompense thee for all thy abominations, and mine eye shall not spare thee, neither have pity or recompense thee according to thy ways and thy abominations. Thou art in the midst of thee, and you shall know that I am Yahweh Shem Yahashai that smiteth. Yeah, that, that actually gave that final blow, because the Lord is the number one hitman. Okay, he controls left and right. Let me get that real quick. Because he's coming with that what? That glittering sword. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 32 and 39. See that I am he and there is no God with me. I kill, I make alive, I wound, I heal. Neither is there any can deliver you out of my hand. So and the Lord is not going to... um. <laughs> the Lord... Let me get that. Nahum 1 and 2. Yahweh is a jealous... It says... Yahweh is jealous and Yahweh revengeth, the Lord revengeth and he is furious. Yahweh will take vengeance on his adversaries and reverse wrath for his enemies. Yeah, he's coming back for the third, fourth generation of those that hated him. Okay, that starts with Esau, Edom, and these other heathen nations, but also two thirds of our people that didn't hearken to, hearken to him in this time. Nahum 1 and 3, the Lord Yahweh is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. And Yahweh has his way in the whirlwind and his storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. How about Shema is all in control, omnipotent, as we're going to read in Deuteronomy 32 and 39. It says, see now that I am he and he that is no God with me. I kill, I make alive, the number one hitman. I wound, yeah, so he could, he could hit you with that uh, that hot sauce. I heal, so he could also heal you like like um, the men of the Lord are being healed by what the physician, which is Shema Shai, because our whole head was sick, right? Those uh, spiritually uh, dead bodies. Okay, now they're standing, standing in the what the land of uh, Egypt, spiritually Egypt, and Sodom, and around the four corners of the earth, preaching the word. That's the healing agent. Okay, that's the physician, which is Yahweh Shai. I will heal. Neither is there any can deliver out of my hand. So it doesn't matter where you go. The Lord's not. You're not going to be delivered out of His hand unless you're of that elect, that remnant. For I will lift up my hand to heaven, and I say, I live forever. Okay, if I wet my glittering sword, so if I wet those missiles or if I whatever weapon that I want to use, okay, and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to my enemies and I will reward them that hate me. So again, the Lord is not playing and he's coming for back for what vengeance those that hate him. That's why it's important to seek him while he is not repent. Let's get I was just right there. Ezekiel 14 and 6, therefore said the house of Israel, thus said Yahweh Shemashai, repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away from your faces from the abominations. Yeah, turn yourself from whatever that you're doing in this life, okay, and come back to the Lord before, before it's too late, okay. Isaiah 55 and 6, seek ye the Lord Yahweh while he may be found, call upon him while he is near, let let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to Yahweh and he will have mercy upon him and to Yahweh he will abundantly pardon because the Lord Yahweh is the only one that has power to forgive sins. Okay, Matthew 9 and 6. That's why it tells you in Matthew, uh, it's like it's Psalms 2 and 12, kiss thy royal son unless he be mad before he catch you, uh, catch, you in, catch you in his activities or catch you in your activities, whatever that you're doing. Okay. You know, and that's in the NLT, roughly paraphrasing that. So let's go, yeah, 10. Behold the day, behold the, I said, behold the day, behold it has come. The morning has gone forth. The rod had blossomed, pride had budded. Yeah, so the pride has, um, you know, reached the heavens, okay? That's why, let me, let me get that. Second Ezra's. Actually, it's nine. No, I think it is. Yeah, maybe it is 15. Yeah, it says, uh, 
for the unfaithful shall die and the unfaithful behold said Yahrashai I will bring plagues upon the world and the sword and the famine and death and destruction for wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth and the hope for works are fulfilled yeah so then that goes into their pride okay that's fulfilled the whole earth I think that's actually a nine too let me see real quick All right, sorry. Let me go back to Zika 7. Oh, that's re okay. Revelation 18 and 5. Okay, uh, I'll still I'll stick in this. Ezekiel 7 and 11. Violence is risen up into the rod of the wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor of the multitude, nor of any of theirs. Neither shall there be any willing for them. Let me read this in the NLT. Their violence has grown into the rod. They will beat them from the wickedness. None of these proud and wicked people will survive. All their wealth and prestige will be swept away. Woo! Yep. So that again, that goes into that pride. That's Proverbs uh, 16 and 18. Okay. What pride go before destruction and before what a haughty fall? Okay. And the Lord is what angry at the wicked every day. I'll just get it over here. This is Proverbs 16 and 18. So it reads, Pride go before destruction and the haughty spirit before a fall. And what you're seeing is a fall of Esau, Edom's uh, queendom. Okay? It says, uh, Proverbs 16 and 4, The Lord Yahweh made all things for himself, yet yeah, even the wicked for the day of evil. And right now, we're headed to that, what, that day of evil, which is uh, bad times. It says, uh, I'm going to read this in the NLT. It says, yes, the time has come. The day is here. Buyers should not rejoice over bargains, nor sellers grieve over losses, for all of them will fall under the under my terrible anger. Yeah, so again, these, uh, these uh, and also in that um, that clip, the, the, the lady said that the, the main boss of the trucking company, he was crying because he knows that he doesn't have no more money, no more tricking, okay, no more, uh, uh, you know, going on the boats, no more going ski doos. Okay, that's over. No more uh, ripping people off. You know, no more uh, the short labors. You know, um, you know, shortchanging people, paying them. You know, a minimum wage where they can't even make no money for their family. They still got to be on welfare. Okay, while they live in a big house, there's no more of that. Okay, and especially for these elites, they're not going to be able to, because uh, um, they think that they're going to be able to come back. Okay, but they're not. The Lord said that they're they're, they're not rise up again. Okay, Ezekiel uh, 13, Ezekiel 7 and 13 in the NLT. Even if the merchants survive, they will never return to business. For what Yahweh has said applies to everyone. It, it will not be changed. Not one person whose life is twisted by sin will ever recover. So if you're in sin, if you didn't repent and be converted, the Lord is, is going to recompense all the um, your wicked, your wicked sins. OK, you're never going to be able to recover. You're never going to be able to build back uh, again the desolate places. OK, Esau, Edom, and that goes for two thirds and all, you know, Jay-Z, these puff that these wicked ass devils. OK, it says um, Ezekiel 7 and 14, it says they have blown the trumpet even to make all ready, but none go to the battle for the wrath is upon the multitude thereof. So the prophets are what blowing the trumpet, but none go to the battle. Our people are not coming to the battle. OK, they're still out there. Um, because what they have surpassed the wicked. They're just like the wicked. Okay. They're in that, um, you know, Takashi, uh, state of mind, that Tupac diva, uh, Megan, the stallion, Cardi B, uh, uh, um, ass out face down, uh, you know, mentality. Okay. And they're not going to come out of it because again, they've been blinded by either Shaitan or the God of this world. Ezekiel 7 and 15, the sword is without pestilence and the famine without that is in the field shall die with the sword. He that is in the city, famine and pestilence shall devour him. So again, there is war outside the city and disease and famine within. Those outside city walls will be killed by enemy swords. Those inside city will die of famine and disease. <laughs> so there ain't, again, Nahum 1 and 3, he shall not all quit the wicked. Okay. And it says that you shall what? Never recover. Okay, that's why it's important to come back to the Lord. Pray you're of the elect. Let's go back to this. We'll probably ended in this chapter. Second Ezra 6. 
2 Ezra 6 and 24. At the time, friends shall fight one against another like enemies. The earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of fountains shall stand still in the three hours they shall not run. So again, the springs of fountains shall not run. What is that speaking about? That's speaking about there's no more water. Okay, because if the water is polluted, if the EMP hits or a blackout hits, there's no more water to be able to pump into your house. Okay, which is going to create what a, a lot of what uh, um, toxic waste. Okay, and then you're seeing the Lake Mead being flooded, uh, being dried up, you know, in these different uh, lakes and oceans that actually run, run over to um, these different places that give you water. Okay, there's not there's not going to be no more. I just speak from the scriptures. Twenty five. Whoever remain from all these things have I told thee shall escape and see my salvation and the end of the end of the world. So we're praying that we're able to be what of that elect to be able to escape what the set perils that are about to happen to this place. Okay. Second Ezra uh, 15. And 10. Behold, my people is led by the flock to slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. So spiritually, we're in the land of Egypt. Okay, Revelation 11 and 8. But I will bring them with a the mighty hand and stretch out arm and smite Egypt with the plagues as before, and I will destroy all the land thereof. So that mighty hand is Yaharashai, or that mighty arm. Okay, it says, Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with plague and punishment that Yahweh shall bring upon him. It's going into the missiles. Okay, right now it's being broken on the inside. Okay, they that till the ground shall mourn, for their seed shall fail through the blasting and hail and with fearful cons consolation. Okay, that goes into the farmers. They're already paying the farmers not to even uh, grow anything. And what hap what's going to happen? That's in, uh, what is that, Ecclesiastes 12, which speaks about the grasshoppers shall be, you know, um, a terror or something like that, roughly paraphrasing because the grass is going to be so high, they're not going to be able to uh, count any of their food. There's going to be uh, a lot of dead bodies too. It says 2nd Ezra 15 and 14, woe, which means destruction unto the world. That's in an ointment and sense. Okay. It says, and then that dwell on therein for the sword and the destruction draweth nigh and one people shall stand up, stand up and fight against another and the swords in their hands. It wasn't the same thing that was said in 2nd Ezra 16. Or second Ezra six, Lakia, and sixteen, it says it too. Okay? Why are they fighting? Because they don't have no food, they don't have no jobs. Okay? And when you, and uh, there's a saying in the world it says, you know, three days, three days without food, okay, you will riot for food. One week without food, you will steal food. Two weeks without food, you will kill for food. And that's the that's the point that we're headed into. But the servants of Yahabah Shemashah, according to Isaiah sixty five and thirteen, servants shall eat. And you shall be thirsty. The servant shall drink, and you shall be you shall be uh, thirsty. Okay, that's why it's important to come back to the Lord, seek Him while He is nigh. Okay, it says, um, "For there shall be sedition among men, evading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. In the course of their actions shall stand in power." So sedition that goes in a revolt against the government. That's why you see uh, Boris Johnson and fifty others. Um, what? They, they're resonating themselves because they already broke the economy. They broke the uh, food supply, okay, from, from them uh, putting sanctions on uh, Russia, and they're about to go to war and ultimately bring in what their great reset that they already been planning for over 20 years. I did a video about that earlier. A man shall desire to go in a city and shall not be able. Why? Because these cities are going to be death zones, okay? <laughs> like The Purge. You watch that movie, The Purge, all of them, okay? That's what's about to happen, Okay. It says 18, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled and the houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. Yeah, so the men, the toughest guy on the block, uh, Junebug, <laughs> is going to be is going to be ugly because that's the first place these uh, these uh, Esau Edom's going to go to is the, the ghettos, vadios and the reservations. That's why it says when you see Jerusalem uh, can pass by, OK, to what? Be able to go to the woods, roughly paraphrasing that, you know, because when because you know that this is the end. And these cities are going to be, again, they're going to be death zones. It says, and this is how I ended right here. A man shall have no pity on his neighbor. Yeah, a man's not going to care what you got because his kids are hungry. His wife's hungry. He's hungry. Okay. And I said that phrase that the one week and the two weeks and, you know, and then the, the three days. Okay. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword. Yeah. So going in, taking whatever you want. That's why these women that are at ease, they don't have a man of the Lord. Okay. They're going to be the first people. Because they don't have nobody, and and, and uh, there's not going to be no laws. There's really going to be no laws, okay? Because they're already the police are already saying they don't want to uh, 
they're, they're, they're behind 40 minutes. They're laying off police. And then um, what was the other one? Oh, yeah, they don't have gas to get to the uh, sites. Okay, so it's going to be ugly if you don't have a minute of the Lord. Second Ezra 15 and 19. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread of great tribulation. The lack of bread, you don't have food, you don't have water, that's going to be great tribulation, which leads to what? Great miseries, okay? So that's why it's important to come back to Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahashai. So with that, call Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahashai, Kwam Yahashala, Shalom, Shalom to the elect.